I'm Christine Tyson. And of course, I'm Sean Anthony Smith. What's good, y'all? Welcome to the industry standard. <sighs> I don't even know, Christine. I, I, I got a little smile on my Over face. Over but... the past couple of days, we lost, I mean, one of the greatest voices of my generation, um, the legendary Whitney Houston at the age of 48. I mean, usually I open the show, I'm very energetic, very excited, but after hearing this noise, it hit me like a, like a brick to my soul. Um, I usually don't mourn over the death of celebrities, but for some reason, Whitney Houston's death just, it was just heart-wrenching. I mean, my, 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 my main take on it is, and you know, guys, you know I don't normally get sad. I'm usually trying to make a joke about something, but mm -hmm. it really broke my heart because I feel like, you know, us being in entertainment, we don't really have no more glamorous people like that anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the Beyonce's, whatever, but Beyonce can't sing like, like, like her. You know what I mean? She sang. She, she went into the studio. She broke it down. She sung. She was glamorous. Yeah, she had drug problems and stuff. You know, I mean, it really, it really brought tears to my eyes because I said she was 48 years old. She's yes. not that older than me. Yes. And for her to go so soon, you know, and and probably we only we, we can't even speculate how she went yet at this point. Yeah. You know, probably and nobody would, like we were talking about this morning, babe. Nobody would ever, ever, ever know. And for her to leave her daughter, yeah. At first, I was upset with her. I you mean, know? the thing about it is, is, is that. I'm not surprised about right, how right, she went. Right. I'm not surprised because, you know, when you do live a life of, yeah, of um, you yeah. know, reckless men. Right. Um, That's true. You, you're you're kind of bound to end up in, in, in this type of situation. However, I'm saddened because I wanted her to win. Yeah, you know, no matter I what, wanted at the end her. Of the day. I wanted her to have a comeback. I wanted her to come back and be victorious but, and be able to sit and speak and really, really, you know, impart it to the younger, but, you know, people like Rihanna who's now right, going right, through, right. you right. know, s uh, some obvious, you know, issues. But you know what, though, I, I, I mean, to break I in there, to win. and I'm gonna say this to you, it's not even about her comeback because Whitney Houston, what what she put on the earth. She didn't have to make a comeback. That's She's like true. Diana Ross. That's true. She, all Whitney had to do was just show up. Show and up. You, and yeah, you give her right. $300,000 just you're walking right. in the room. You're right. All she had to do was show up. But see, we, we don't know what demons she was working with in, inside her soul. Mm -hmm. And God got her now, you know? So I mean, but God has her now. I mean, Hopefully God has her now. Everything is, you know, she's no more suffering. But but She was the most awarded female in, 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 in history. Ever in, in history. history. And, and the thing is, like I said, 22 American Music Awards. Who gets that in a lifetime? The people need to get that in a lifetime. The soundtrack to The Bodyguard is still the largest selling soundtrack album ever. And you know what? Ever. Though? And you know what's so funny? And can I say something not being funny? If you look at, if you look at her younger pictures, she looked like a black Barbie doll. She, she beautiful. She looked like a black beautiful. Barbie doll. She could have been a model. She could I mean... You know, Granted, she, did, she did model. She modeled back in the day. I mean, not, not to the, you know, whatever the stature. The thing about it is just, just that it's like, you know, every song she had, hit after hit after hit, speaks to everybody. I mean, her music was just fun. And I mean, not my thing, the thing that I loved about Whitney the most is that when you look at her videos, because I was watching them all, they was playing them on um, Centric and BET mm -hmm. and MTV. You remember, all, remember the time that you was there? You remember something about it? Not only that, but I realized... She gave back to a lot of up and coming singers. She did she did songs with Kelly Price. She did songs with TLC. Yeah, she did yeah. songs with Shaka Khan. She did songs with um with um with, with Missy. She yeah, did yeah, songs yeah, with, she did. with Brandy, she did. Monica. Like she really took them all under her wing like a godmother. You and, don't really see a lot of and, diva females doing that. She didn't and, uh, and more importantly. She didn't have to come out on nobody's um, rap album. No, she didn't. She didn't have to take off her clothes. Never Every had to. Every single video, she is fully clothed and elegant mm -hmm. and sell. And that's what she never saying. had to, she, to compete with the younger but, but, crowd, like you, Tony Braxton or somebody. Right, right. But you know what that was? Because Clive Davis, you know, was her mentor, and he kept her glamorous. He yes. He stayed on her. Yes. She, what, she, what, what I'm going to miss about Whitney Houston is... The old Hollywood stature of what you we right. call out the industry standard. standard. The, yes. oh, that is yes. gone. Yes. That is gone. Yes. I don't know. You take Nicki Minaj. I don't know what the You'll hell that is. You'll never see her booty never, shaking in the video. You never. You never see her in panties, we could, gyrating, we could rubbing never. up on a guy. No. It was about nothing. the voice. She did a video with her husband. They was dancing and singing on a boat. 
you know, the we talent. got something in common. Even she, up until even even up to up until her recent video, you know, Million Dollar Baby, mm -hmm. she's still fully clothed. Right. Nowadays, you don't see that. You I, see I, the older ones trying to compete with the sexism of the younger ones. Uh -huh. Whitney didn't have to do she that. She never had to. And she had the body too. To. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she had the body too. She could have did it. She could have did it. She never. But did. she never had to. She never. But did. you know, but I'm, I, I, you know, my my heart goes out to her family. You know what I mean? And, and and people stop blaming Bobby Brown, you know, because I mean he had I mean a man could bring you down, people say a woman could bring you down, but but don't don't blame him because yeah. He, it was up to her to do whatever she was doing. Well, people don't and, understand and that Bobby that. Brown and Whitney Houston met in a club. In a club, In baby. the back of the room. Probably so, doing what they did. So she was what already was into something right. that she was in the same circle where she could actually link up with him, share a couple of words, and get together. Like, they met right. partying. And, Let's not forget that. And also, and understand this, guys. He loved her. Yes. No matter what you say. He loved that woman. We, we relationships are relationships. Mm -hmm. This is that they were in the public and their stuff was played out. And, and you know, he's a knucklehead, you know, but I mean, I'm sure he's mourning her and then my heart go out to you too, Bobby Brown. I mean, I'm sure and her daughter's on suicide I, I watch. Just, She's been hospitalized that poor twice child. since. And that poor child. Let me explain something to you guys. It's like, because a lot of people say, oh, why are you crying? Because of Whitney Houston. You didn't know her. They're standing the third. You don't have to know a person to show, to be compassionate. compassionate and to show empathy for their right, situation. Right. Why are you I crying? am a woman who lost my mother at the age of 30. Right. And it was the most heart-wrenching thing that I have ever, ever experienced in my 30 years of life. So I can't even imagine being 19 in this like big, huge, glamorous world because it's not like she can just like go on with her life just like anybody else. She's always gonna be watched because she's the daughter of Whitney Houston. And, and she already yeah. had a couple of problems with, with a little drug prior and to like this. And it's like, we just gotta really keep her in prayer because right. she doesn't have any siblings from her mother. Right. And you know, her father's still re reinventing his career. And then, know what it is? And then my problem is that Sissy Houston, her, her grandmother, is like older. Yes. You know what I mean? So we yes. really know, you know, what that's all about as yes. far as her taking care of the child. I, I just, you know, my heart goes out to the baby. That's, she's such a baby. And, yes. you know, the mass of money she might end up getting, you know, yes. will never yes. be what yes. her, to bring her mom back. I'm telling you, you know? because when my mom passed away, you know, there's people who handle grief differently. Right. You know, some people wild out. Some people lash out. Some people begin to take substance abuse because it really is... Um, daunting on your spirit because like when your mother passed away you begin to feel like your life is is a myth like everything about your life prior to that because is a myth because you came from this person you know and now is? this person is no longer here yeah. so it's like is all the years prior to this person gone a lie like you you, you know you right, wake no, up no, you feeling like everything. yeah you start questioning everything because, in your life the people around you i mean because you being 30 and your mom you know yes you know, i was there with you and everything with your mom passing at 30, you know, when I was crying with you guys, because I, I, I felt your pain because I said, how would, I, I don't know, my mother's the only person that I know. Yes. You know that, I mean, I'm close with people in my family, but my mommy is my mommy. And not only that, it's like your future. When you think about your future, it's always going to be tainted with this absence of this great person in your life. It's right. like you have these great moments, no matter what she does from here on, mommy that is, is an mommy. achievement of her life. Mommy to to mommy. having a baby, to getting married, to whatever she decides to do in her career, there will always be a hint of sadness that comes with the happiness because Whitney Mommy's will no, no longer, longer be there to, 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 to share it with and her. And from what I hear, she was a damn good mother. Yes, you, know, you could tell. You could tell. You could and, tell. And, and, and people, you can tell. even if she drug over, the, whatever she did, guys, it, it has nothing to do with anything. Yes. That, it's basically, y'all got to, it's a human being. And also, to the people out there, to the fans who are saying, you know, you know, y'all should have told her she was great when she was here. Whitney knew exactly. exactly how people felt about right. her. It's just like Michael Jackson. It wasn't a secret. Right. It's not like Don Cornelius where you didn't know right. you, who you appreciated know, him he, or who was in a circle or who loved him. He shot himself in the head and you was like, exactly. okay. But Whitney Houston knew exactly how great of a talent she was mm -hmm. and how loved she was by the people around her, by her fans, everyone. Right. Everyone loved Whitney. No matter if we joked on her yeah, or yeah. said whatever you know, about I mean, her substance yeah, yeah. whatever. I, I've had jokes. I've, I've said jokes about Whitney, but I've always, but you got to understand, but she's like our black queen. She's yes, like our black yes, sister. Yes, yes, yes. She was that thing yes. to us. 
that, you know, like when you looked at Bill Cosby as being our father and stuff of that nature, you know, she was that thing to us, you yes. know, and, and, and you know, I, I, I'm just very sad about the whole situation, I know. I, I can't you know, even, and, and I you know, for them to have a party downstairs while she was dead upstairs on the fourth I, floor. I felt like that was I, so I was disrespectful. Like, I, I just said, Clive Davis, I know what you're is old. wrong. Like, come I know you're old and everything. You know, you my in dude. I love your depth. Building? I've met you many And then times. Alicia Keys, you want to sing a tribute? I wouldn't have even been able oh, to show but up. But that tribute. The Jennifer Holiday, I mean, Lope, what her name is? Hudson. Now? Hudson, that was horrible. But think I, about it. Horrible. No, have you seen Jennifer Hudson? Jennifer Hudson the day before was just with Clive, sitting with Clive Davis, talking to CNN about the upcoming right. film and how he's taking her under his wing. He feels like she's the next Whitney Houston. And I mean, when you think about the voice, you can, you can agree with that. So when she did this tribute, she was choked up inside. Right, yeah. Can you, I, I could barely talk. When I'm uh, when I'm holding back tears, let alone sing and belt out something, it, it, like it just happened yesterday. Yeah, you know what I mean? It, it was this, horrible. This, it made for me, her performance, so I don't it, think I wasn't expecting her to give this like awesome stellar performance because it was so close to home. And you guys have to also realize right now Jennifer Hudson is in court. The guy, the man who killed right. her mother uh, yeah, and her yeah, brother yeah. is on trial. She needs to chill so out. So she's been going back she and forth to court. And she understands you know, that pain. Exactly. You know, so it's like. To, it was just, you know, yeah, if she's on yeah. the I just felt so horrible. Yeah. She, because, you know what I said? Couldn't, she couldn't belt was, out was, something. No, but it was just horrible to me because guess what I said to myself? I said, she, you know, for her to hang out with her, for her to be friends with her, it, it's just done. Yes, and you she's dealing I mean? with her mother. She she knows firsthand what Bobby Christina is going through. Like this has hit Jennifer. I mean, if it's hit me, and I don't even know Whitney personally, there's no way I would even be able to stand up and perform a song in her honor. I'm sorry. So for Jennifer, I wouldn't have been able to Jennifer do it Hudson to be able to do yeah. it because I tell you, nobody else probably wanted to do it. No, nobody no, else probably could have done it. I to do it. I would tell him, no, nah, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. I, I just would have been like, yo, I'm good. I don't even want to be within that whole situation, especially if you're close to her. Yes. But, I, but, I, but you know what? I, and Bobby Brown, I want I would love to just say to you, take care of your daughter, man. Whatever you do, she needs you more than anything in the world. But they also said, I don't know if it's a legend, I'm not true or not, but they said his father had died, the 82-year-old um, Bobby Sr. Yeah, died, he just the, died. The, the day before, when mm -hmm. he died. So that's like, I know he's bugging out, and he has yeah. drug problems. Bobby, stay strong. But on this note, we're gonna, we're gonna wrap it up on this Whitney Houston, but I just wanna leave it on this note. The night, two nights before she passed away, mm -hmm. the very last song that she sung with Kelly Price was God is my savior. Oh, Jesus. So a lot of people are saying that, you know, she made good with her life before right, she right. left. Right, right. She made peace with God. So, you know, I love to believe she that she, she sung a song to God in the midst of her peers, in the midst of whatever she was going through. And, you know, I just want to say rest in peace, Whitney. I'm saying rest in peace also. And, Whitney, we love you. I, I and I say, I appeal to Bobby Brown right now. Please take I'm care of your daughter. Take care of that girl, man. Take care. If you don't, I, I know mean, you got a whole bunch of other kids. Yes, I had to put my yes. joke in there. But you need to take care of her right now. Yeah. Plus, yeah. she the one with the money. This is, this is, this is true. This is true. Um, but on another note, um, Macaulay Culkin. I don't know what the hell that is. I hope he was doing a movie. Was role. recently seen in New York City. I hope he's doing a movie. Looking role. like this. I mean, Yo. th and, and this, is, this is the issue that I have is that his publicist put out a statement, mm -hmm. and I quote, Wait, you got the statement? I love it. Macaulay Culkin is in perfectly good health. For a crackhead. Now, he's 31 years that? old. What the I hell mean, is he's 31 years old. He looks 65. This is what I'm saying. You cannot. Okay. There's no way okay. in the world let's, let's, you can look at this picture and put out a statement in good, in, in good decency and well, faith you know what? Let, and let's, say, let, let's this assume, guy yo, is in perfectly good health. Let me do a favor. Let's assume that that's for a movie role. It's like, this, not. It's better be. It's because, not. This guy is, what? is two because, seconds away from death. No, because guess what? Because if that's the truth, they left him home alone too many times. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm serious. He looks like a he looks like a skate a, a skate chihuahua. This is home alone 31. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Like yo, this guy looks dude, like he's on the verge of dude, death. My dude, yo, that is death. I would not want to look like that. Why would you come outside looking like that? I Christine, mean, if I ever get on drugs... No, look at his neck, look at his nose, look at his eyes, look at his ears. If I ever look like that, I need you to beat my ass.
<laughs> but but no, but these are the, but Hollywood. These are the type of people out there. Oh, you're a perfectly good health. <gasps> Oh, Lord Jesus, baby. You're in perfectly good health. You're in perfectly good health, you know, Macaulay I Culkin. Guess what? Did, did, guess what? I think I need to go to the bathroom and start throwing up there. <laughs> I'm saying. I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a chubby yeah, looking yeah. kind of woman, me. but Producer, this is, this is, my this is not, this is not, this is not healthy. This is worse than Demi Moore. This is where's not, bucket? this is where's not healthy at yeah, all. Where's my bucket? He needs help. He needs help. All right. Oh, get him out of here. Oh, Lord um, Jesus, baby Jesus. Greg Kelly. He should be guilty. He, he came back to work. He, he came of, back to work. He's full of it. Yo, is she beautiful? He's, he's in, no, up. he's, I, I believe he's innocent. I don't think so. I think his father's the, the, his, father's the commissioner. No, 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 no. Here's why. This is oh, why he got blue. off. No, oh, this is why, blue. listen, this is why Greg Ke Ke Kelly got off. What? First of all, they had sex. Mm. Went back to her boss's office, which is the law firm. She's a mm. paralegal. Mm. They had sex. After they had sex, there was text messages. Oh. Going back and forth about I had such a great time. Oh. You did me so great. But you claim you were drunk and you believe you were raped. But okay, there's now. text messages and people, this is a this is a tip to all of you guys and gals out there. Text messages never go away. That's right, you can always pull them up. They never That's go why, away. Even though, you know, I used to feel stupid because I used to erase my stuff and thought I was getting rid of yeah, it. Yeah, no. Psych. <laughs> if the government wants no, to yo, get into okay. them, they so, can. So, so he stuck his pee-pee in her tutu and then she got mad and something must have happened. He threw a she got pregnant. And then she got done. pregnant. It wasn't it wasn't Wait. her boyfriend's baby. She had an abortion. And it was his baby? And it was his baby. And her husband, and she told her fiance, her boyfriend at the time, who's still her boyfriend now, that she was raped by Greg Kelly. She's and he kept forcing her to come up with, to go to the cops. And eventually Yo, she did. Guess what? So she's a slut. Yeah, I don't believe, I don't believe that he did this. Not one that's minute. That's what it is. You know, but Greg Kelly, the sorry. The text messages, I mean, Maria Del Toro, you're done. That's her name? Yes, her name Ma is a Her name, name is Maria Del Toro. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Maria, Maria Del Toro. Del and oh, I, don't, I don't believe for one minute that you was raped. And then they got, and not only that, they looked at the receipt bill mm -hmm. from the um from the bar. Mm -hmm. She didn't have uh, as many drinks to be considered wow. drunk. Wow, wow. To she, be considered legally drunk. Okay. So then she could, she could walk that line, huh? She could yes. walk that line. Then they looked. <laughs> then they looked at the uh, footage of them entering and exiting the law firm, and she was standing tall, walking just fine. So. Her ass is out of okay, here. Stop lying. Yeah, whatever. Stop lying. Stop lying. You know, Greg mm -hmm. Kelly, do mm -hmm. your thing. Yeah, yo. All right, so Obama <laughs> signed, um, signed the uh, birth control bill. Now, the bill states that anyone who works for a religious group mm -hmm. um, for their health plan is required to be able to get birth control through their health insurance. Right. The Catholic Church, you know, got really up in arms. Some Catholics, some re other religious groups got really up in arms. And they said, you know what? We don't like this Obama. You know, we don't believe in birth control. We don't believe in abortion. You know, for you to put out this is, is crazy. So they were really getting at the Obama administration. Okay. So he came back out mm -hmm. and he added an addendum to the bill, which states that if a religious group do not want to offer it through the health insurance, the health insurance itself has to pay for that woman's uh, birth control. Uh, um, can you look at my face, please? Why don't you Catholic people work on your priest? <laughs> Listen, I, on that note, um, <laughs> okay. I don't want to be don't giving give to no religious. Birth, you should give your priest some birth control. I mean, but what, or some sex control. I mean, what, Why don't you worry about what, your priest? How much money y'all put now to... to, to to keep your priests from raping these little boys and stuff. Why don't you? I don't even want to talk about. I this, just want okay? to know. Okay, Cut abortion is one thing. Okay, come on. Y'all don't agree with abortion, but what is the problem? Okay, but listen, we're offering you don't think that these little control. Oh my God! Because because they don't because they because because they all having sex with little boys and stuff. Like, but not even that. If they're working for you, then I mean they're consenting mm, adults. Number one. Number yo, two. What about if dude, you're married yo, dude, and you already have three children yo, listen, and you work for the archdiocese yo, Christine, and you decide you don't want any more Christine, kids? Yo, do me a favor, y'all. Leave Obama's ass alone please yo worry about your priests because after y'all wasting all your money trying to get bail these priests out get these priests uncovered the Too catholic sorry. people sorry i'm not catholic i'm baptist but understand this and i have nothing <laughs> against anything but do baptist. me a favor go go 
Go worry about your damn priests, because they out there doing what they doing. Y'all anybody saying about that? The nuns is getting this world on, and the priests is getting this world on. Y'all need mean, to worry about that. Don't you kind of you you have a point. I mean, they just looking for any damn right. good thing. Worry about your so, priests. I mean, come on now. He wants to get people off the damn abortion table. What is the problem with right. that? And Let them give out some damn birth control. I'm sure there's a little boy under the priest. A, I mean, no. y'all go pro-life, pro-choice. So let it be a person, Christine. a woman's I'm sure choice. right now, as we speak, there's a little boy under a priest's um, ooh, dress right now, ooh, ooh, so I don't okay. even want to talk about okay, it. Okay, speaking of, uh, let's move on. Uh, I would like to take you guys to the manager's corner. There's some cool <laughs> things that are happening now in, um, in entertainment, and I want to kind of tune you guys into it. First off, speaking of, uh, you know, religious groups, TLC and True Entertainment has paired up to put out Preacher's Wives. Um... So far, they have not, and I'm saying this with a laughter because there's a lot of things that go on in the ministry, and I can't even believe that someone wants to, to, to air all this stuff and give people another reason to not go to church. However, they, people aren't signed on yet, but there are some interests, um, it's, and it's actually going to be shot in Atlanta, of course. Um, Basketball Wives Miami Season 4 is Bizak with a vengeance. I mean, Evelyn's throwing wine bottles. I mean, Tammy's cursing out people. I, I'm, I'm beginning to think that it's all acting. <laughs> um, but I'm going to be tuned in. February 20th, VH1, 9 p.m. Okay, guys? Jennifer Hudson has a new book out. It's called, I Got This, How I Changed My Ways and Lost Weight. Lost weight me down. I I don't know what that whole title was about. Um, it's it's too long. You should have just put Weight Watchers by J Hud. Um, but it's gonna be talking about how she came down, how she lost weight. Since people think that you know she just went and got gastric bypass and that Weight Watchers is a complete scam. So the book is already out in stores. If you guys are interested, go cop it. I know there's a bunch of chubby lumpkins like myself running around that want to know how she did it. She's telling all. Um, Anthony Mackie. He's not really one of my favorite actors or favorite people for that matter. However, he just opened a New Orleans-style restaurant in Bedford-Stuyvesant called No Bar. It's located on 608 Nordstrom Avenue in Brooklyn. I think I might want to stop by there. Um, Brooklyn is a gentrified neighborhood, borough now, and there's a lot of things coming to it. New Orleans style, I've never been. I may want to go and just check it out. If you guys, you know, want to go check it out, again, it's um, 608 Nordstrom, and if you didn't catch all of that, you can always go to our blog, www.tistalklounge.com, and get all the info. Also, I just want to say, I just want to get one quick review before we're done. Smash is a smash. It is NBC's new Glee style um, theater show for adults. And I mean, last week's episode was brilliant. I suggest you guys check it out. It comes on Monday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, NBC. Check it out. Let me know if I'm right. Let me know what you think. TISTalkLounge.com. What's up, Sean Anthony Smith? Okay, first of all, <laughs> the preacher's wives thing. Why the hell? Why they got to be black preacher's wives? <laughs> what they want to do is go into the black church and make us that's look stupid. That's and exactly then the what black they want. That's exactly. It's going to make us look stupid. That's exactly it's how be I feel. Unwed and all type of nonsense that's going how I feel. on in there. It's going to give Money people another reason why. Other. Basketball wives, gonna... you, you could put that where? Back there, like Vivica Fox said. Jennifer Hudson book. Uh, God forbid if this chick gains more weight after this. No, she ain't. She no, no, ain't. Hold on, she's hold on. dying. No, listen to me carefully. God forbid, if this chick gains more weight, she gonna kill herself. She lost because, ten sizes. Okay, but guess what? If she she's, gained, no, you, not even you, ten sizes. She's a size zero baby, now. Baby, but her head is so big she, on her body. It's no, no disrespect to her. But guess what? If she gained that weight back, she, was, she went from yeah. a size now, six Anthony to Mackie, a size four. Now, Anthony Mackie, Avenue. I ain't going there. I'm not trying I'm to get shot. I'm going. I'm Go going. Ahead. You better wear your bulletproof vest, dude. That's Notion Avenue. That's Die Hard, Brooklyn. <laughs> you got to be careful. I ain't that hungry before. Do you, you deliver? Because if you deliver to Manhattan, then maybe I'm coming. You know what I mean? And the smash, I'm, 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 I ain't watching Glee Part 2. Sorry. I don't care about that. <laughs> okay. Before we wrap everything up, I want to talk, talk about Shaq. Shaq in the pink bikini. Uh-oh. Now, my thing is... Okay, he he gets it to this. I think um, he's sexy. He get, uh, no, you didn't. No, you, you know what? For her you, know what? you know what? <laughs> look, he look. he look, lost look. a bet. To, <laughs> he lost a bet to Jimmy Fallon uh, for the Late Show, and it, it was it was pretty much 
walk like, two blocks he, he like he shit in, in a pink it. bikini. <laughs> he look like he shit in it. It look like a diarrhea in it. The reality is, Shaq, this ain't the damn industry standard, okay? Stop walking around in pink ass underwear, looking like a damn buffoon. All right, you an NF NBA player. Not Can anymore. You, Did he well, retire? Get it together. Okay. So, uh, this okay. makes me sick to see a black man toting around in a damn pink bikini. Okay. Uh, I mean, you know, Christine, I mean, Christine. this makes me mad. Anyway, uh, we're wrapping Jimmy, it up. He got Jimmy you, Fallon's name on his ass. I know. you. That's my beep right there. That's when, that's when the beep lost How the fuck you doing? Okay. My no, yo, we, yo, but I want to talk about the blue ivy gets trademarked. Because that baby white. That ain't their baby. Look at that test. I told you that's a surrogate. She's that cute. is not that baby. She's cute. He don't have Jay Z's nothing. She's he cute. He damn sure ain't got his hair. Well, I mean, and he ain't got hers either because she ain't got none. And then the thing is this. Look at that. That baby white, yo. That's a white people baby. Ooh. That but is me. I said Jay Z's baby. But, guess baby, but okay? I hear you because you got something anyway. up on. No, hold on. She got something up on Angelina Jolie and Madonna and Melissa Mariska Hargate. Now, see, we don't got one of your white babies. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> anyway, anyway, guys. Baby they, Jesus. This is the industry oh, standard. Jesus. That is the industry standard right there, boo. <laughs> All right, here, Whitney Houston. Yeah, baby. Soon to be R.I.P. to Macaulay Culkin if he don't get his shit together. Oh, yeah. And, hey, yo. you know, thank you guys for tuning in. You can catch us every Friday, 8.30 p.m. here on Broxnet. We run out of time. Um, don't forget to hit us up on our blog, www.tistalklounge.com. You can get our email, past episodes, everything, you name it. Well, shout out to Connecticut. See y'all on Monday. And send us more pictures of that little white baby of Jay-Z's and Beyonce's. I got to see more of that. That's not that baby. I swear to that God. That is their baby. baby. She had the no, baby. Dude, Jay -Z, that's her baby. Jay -Z, Jay -Z, that's, Will you stop? I, they need to do DNA on that. Will you stop? That's that, that's that girl baby. Mm -hmm. It look like Jay-Z. No, it don't. It yes, look, it, it look like Sergeant Bullock. <laughs> 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 they can laugh.